بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يؤت الحكمة من يشاء ومن أوتي الحكمة فقد أوتي خيرا كثيرا To hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam, Imam Mahdi, recite the second salawat lauda. To make our Imam, Imam Mahdi, happy with us, recite the third salawat lauda. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the tawfiq and favored us with the tawfiq to see and observe the month of Ramadan again. And this is a bless of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Too many people that were hoping to see the month of Ramadan again, now they are under the ground. They are with their deed, whether it's good or bad. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the tawfiq to fast again, to have the opportunity to recite Qur'an again, to see and experience the very spiritual moments of this holy month. Shahrun du'itum fihi lidhiyafati rab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited all of you to be his guest in this month. In this month, as we have in our narration, it is Rabi'ul Qur'an, it is the spring of Qur'an. And that means actually, we as a human being, we as Muslims, we as followers of the Prophet and his progeny, if we recite the Holy Qur'an in this month, we can understand it and comprehend it better. Qur'an is Qur'an, there is no different between Qur'an in this month and any other month. The difference is in our hearts, that our hearts is being enlightened by Almighty God in the month of Ramadan, so we can comprehend the meaning of Almighty God's verses better and better. I want to... Qur'an is the book that we can take and grab in our hands. Is the book that we have to recite and respect and kiss. The book that we have to follow, that's verses. There is another Quran. And that's the talking Quran compared to what we have and shows. The silent Quran. And that Quran is Ali ibn Abi Talib. If this month is the Rabi'ul Quran, the month, the spring of Quran, that we can understand Quran better. Of course, in the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the month that Ali ibn Abi Talib was murdered, martyred in, is the month of Ali ibn Abi Talib as well. We can actually know the commander of the faithful better in this month. Just think about the last moment of Amir al Mu'mineen's life in this world when he used to walk towards the mosque of Kufa and glorifying Allah, saying subhanallah and Allahu Akbar. This month is the month of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam as well. And he was killed and martyred in the day, in the night of this day. So we have the opportunity not only to recite Quran but also to gain more knowledge, to have a deeper ma'rifah and insight in our beloved Imam, the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib in Salamullahi Ali. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Quran, يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءَ وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give hikmah and wisdom to whoever he wants, he wills. And whoever gets that hikmah actually he gained something very huge and big. When we go to our narration, Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam interpret this verse, this very important verse and say, Hikmah is ma'rifatul imam and ta'atul imam. Obeying imam is hikmah. 
and following the footstep of our beloved Imam Ishikmah and knowing our Imam Ishikmah. And that is exactly what we are looking for, especially in the month of Ramadan. Just put that in your mind. What will happen in the night of destiny? تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالرُّوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ بِأَمْرِ رَبِّهِمْ تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend his angel upon whom? Upon his successor, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi alayhi afdal salatu wa aska salam. And what is the night of destiny? It's the night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write our destiny and our faith up to the next year. And he informs his successor, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi, about our destiny and our fate. So we have to pay attention to Imam Mahdi and his grandfather. So our topic is about the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and salamullahi alayhi, and our Imam, the Imam of our time, Al-Imam Al-Hujja, Al-Muntadhar, Al-Mahdi, Ajalallah Ta'ala, Farajahu Sharif, and how Imam al-Mahdi, peace be upon him, and may Allah hasten his reappearance, will follow the footsteps of his grandfather, the commander of the faithful, in his government. This is very important. Imam Amir al-Mu'maneen sat on the pulpit in the mosque of Kufa. And he started to recite a sermon. And he said in his saying, Ma min ilmin illa wa ana aftahu. There is no knowledge that I won't open its door. I will open the no, I will open the doors of all knowledge. All knowledge opened, doors of all knowledge opened by the hand, the sacred hand of Amir al Mu'mineen. You know this narration. Other sects narrate this narration as well. Ana Madinatul Ilm. I, the Rasulullah, am the city of knowledge. Wa Aliyun Babuha. Ali is the door of knowledge. Ali is the door of the city of knowledge. And the city of knowledge is the Prophet. And Amir al Mu'mineen said that the key is with me. And I will open. Doors of all knowledge. ما من علم إلا وأنا أفتح وما من سر إلا والقائم يختمه. And there will be no secret, no secret. It means, in other words, it is secret now. Things that we don't know. That's why it's secret. But when Imam al-Mahdi comes, reappears, and Imam Ali alayhi salam is talking about secret knowledge. Imam al-Mahdi will show you those secret, will expose those secrets to you, will tell you those secrets. So there is connection between the door of the city of knowledge, the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib, and his grandson, Al Imam Al Mahdi, who will seal one day all secrets, in other words, who will teach you, make you learn and understand and comprehend all secrets. And this is important. This shows us. There is a strong relationship between Imam al-Mahdi and Imam Ali. Of course, we are living in the era between the government of Imam Ali, which was in the past, and the government of Imam Mahdi, which will come. And it is important for us, brothers and sisters, to comprehend and to know how Imam al-Mahdi will rule. What Imam al-Mahdi will do? What will be his policy? Of course, in the era of Imam al-Mahdi, Imam al-Mahdi will have enemies. We have to decide whether we want to be with Imam al-Mahdi or against him. 
no one gonna be neutral in the era of Imam al-Mahdi. And to behave ourselves, we have to know what prophets want to do. What is their intention? What are their duties? What they want from us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, those we give them the power to govern what they will do they will lead the prayers they will help poor people they will order people to do good deeds and avoid sin and evil deeds this is exactly what Imam al-Mahdi will do he won't give us each one of us a private jet and a luxury house on the beach. This is not the duty of Imam al-Mahdi. And that's why. Because some people have that assumption. That prospect. That Imam al-Mahdi will come and give their desires. And fulfill their desires. They give them what they want. Of course when they see him. Coming. Grabbing the sword of Ali ibn Abi Talib al Fiqar, Waiting for enemy to come to fight against him helping poor and teaching us that this dunya is not your place and I'll talk about that elaborate this point more and more in our next lectures inshallah that Imam al-Mahdi won't make us slaves of dunya of course, he will give us what we need. But he won't make us a slave of dunya. Rather, he will teach us that this dunya is the dunya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about in Holy Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ida shamsu kuwirat wa ida nujumun kadarat. That the sun, sun's light, will be turning off one day. Stars will get dark because this dunya should get dismissed in the day of judgment. It will be the day of akhirah hereafter. So he won't make us slaves of dunya. And that's why some people, when Imam al-Mahdi reappears, they will stand up and beat his chest and tell him that go back, we don't need you. We have our policies, we have our parliament, we have our laws, we have our traditions, we don't need you, we want to live here forever. We want to be slave of dunya, but Imam al-Mahdi will come and educate everyone, that eventually you will end up dead. So how many houses do you need? How many cars do you need? How many? How many hours? Yes, I'll give you what you need. I won't let anyone to oppress you. I will break necks of all tyrants. But to make you slave of dunya, never. I've never created jinn and human beings. But to worship me and Imam al-Mahdi will do that will give us the platform, the atmosphere that we can, in that atmosphere, actually worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will lead our praise and help poor people and orders us to do good deeds and avoid committing sins. So, all you want to do? To know how Imam al-Mahdi will rule, we have to look at Imam Amir al-Mu'maneen, the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib's government. Imam Mahdi will rule as Imam Ali ruled, will govern as Imam Ali governed. And actually he said that. And we have that in our narration, that Imam al-Mahdi 
will follow the footsteps of his grandfather Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And footsteps of his grandfather, the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib. What about now? Now we are living in the era of occultation. And what does that mean? How we can understand the era of occultation. And this is very important, brothers and sisters. Just bear with me. When the successorship was confiscated of the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib. And Imam Ali was sat in his house for 25 years. That was the era of occultation of Ali ibn Abi Talib. To understand the era of occultation of Imam al-Mahdi, you have to understand the era of occultation of Imam Ali. Was Amir al-Mu'min sitting back in home, shutting his door off? Doing nothing? Of course not. Of course not. And Imam al-Mahdi is doing and fulfilling his duties in this era. The only thing, the only difference between Imam al-Mahdi and Imam Ali alayhi salam is that even if we see Imam al-Mahdi, we cannot recognize him. While Amir al-Mu'min's companions and normal people, when they used to see and observe Amir al-Mu'min, they used to know him. This is the only difference between Imam al-Mahdi and Imam Ali. So don't assume that we are not allowed to be naive and fool to say, okay, Imam al-Mahdi is sitting down, waiting for Allah to give him the permission so he can start his job. He is already, he already started his mission. When he is Imam of our time. What does that mean? It means that in the future he will govern. In the future he will help. Or now he is imam of our time. As we have in some narrations, if you face any trouble, any hardship, just put your hand above your head. It's in our narration. And say, Al-Mustaghath bika, ya sahib al-zaman. I seek refuge in you, O sahib al-zaman. What does that mean? It means that he can help you. He can guide you. So don't think that Imam al-Mahdi is sitting back watching the world, one government or country invading another, one person killing another, a tyrant killing millions of people like Hitler and Saddam and Imam al-Mahdi doesn't move anything. It's not like that, brothers and sisters. Yes, he's not reappeared, but it's not like that. Imam al-Mahdi is Imam of our time. He helps, he interferes. He will, it's not like that, that he will be Imam. No, he is Imam. He is Imam. And that opened a very huge window for us to understand that we are already living under the shadow of Imam al Mahdi. And Imam al Mahdi is. A bliss for us as the sun is a bliss for grass, even if it's behind the cloud. So, till now, to know how Imam al Mahdi will govern, we have to see how Imam Amir al Mu'minin govern. And to know, okay. What is our duties in the era of occultation? We have to see what were the duties of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib's companion when Amir al-Mu'min was sitting back in his home. So do you think that Salman and Maqdad and Abu Dhar and Ammar and Malik, especially Malik, yes, Salman, Maqdad, Abu Dhar, they were taught by the Prophet and Amir al-Mu'min. But what about Uwais al-Qarani? Uwais al-Qarani is from Hawari and those who followed the footsteps of Imam Ali. And he was martyred in between Amir al-Mu'mineen's hand, protecting Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib. What about Malik al-Ashtar? Imam Ali alayhi salam prepared the head of his soldiers, Malik al-Ashtar, while he was sitting back in home. 
and Imam Al Mahdi, listen to this, will make and prepare his companion while he is in the era of occultation. So Imam Al Mahdi's companion are getting manufactured in the era of occultation. Not in the era when Imam Mahdi reappears. So what I want to try to what, what, what I'm trying to say, we have duties now. Our duty and obligation won't start when Imam Mahdi reappears. If we wait until then, we might be with him or against him. But if we start from now, if we try to know our Imam. If we try to have a deeper insight of our, about our Imam of our time, Al Imam Al Mahdi, alayhi salam, if he reappears, we know where should we put our steps. We know that we have to be with him. Imam Ali, for instance, told Uthman ibn Hanif, one of his companions, okay, he told him, just, I want you to know that your Imam and your leader, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he only eats bread. He wears normal clothes. And of course you cannot be like him. Why you cannot be like him? Because Imam Ali said, in Nahjul Balagha, لا يقاس بآل محمد أحد. There is no comparison between anyone and أهل البيت. You cannot make any comparison between أهل البيت and anyone, even if he's a prophet. I'm not talking about our prophet, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. What do you think we can make comparison between Prophet Joseph and the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib? Of course not. Can we make comparison? Between Prophet Moses and Ali ibn Abi Talib? Of course not. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet Musa to go and preach. For the oneness of Allah, Prophet Musa in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the Prophet Musa, peace be upon him, said, Oh Lord, I am scared. I've killed one of them. They might execute me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied, no, I will protect you. But when our prophet ordered the commander of the faithful to go to Mushrikeen and recite Surah Al-Bara'a, while Ali ibn Abi Talib killed their leaders, Ali ibn Abi Talib went all by himself and recited Surah Al-Bara'a, Bara'a Allahi wa Rasulah, ila alladheena ahatun. Let us stop by that. The last Friday of Shaban, when our Prophet started his sermon about the month of Ramadan. After he finished his speech, Amir al Mu'mineen stood up and asked the Prophet, What is the best thing? that we have to look at to do in the month of Ramadan. Ma huwa afdalu al-a'mal fi al-shahr. O Prophet. And the Prophet replied, Al-wara'u an maharim Allah. To refrain from committing sin. So the best thing is to refrain, not to do anything. To stop backbite. To stop lying. To stop, look at na mahram. This is the best thing. To stop, think bad about people. This is the best thing. To put a limit for your desires is the best thing. And then the Prophet started to cry. Why? He started to cry in a way that Amir al Mu'min felt the sour in his heart. The Prophet's tears started to drop on his beards. 
So why you are crying, O oh, Prophet? The Prophet replied, لما يستحل منك في هذا الشهر The best thing is to refrain from committing sin. But O oh, Ali, do you know what they going to do in this month? Not only they will commit sin, but they will justify that. Not only they will kill an innocent mu'min, but they will kill the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib and assume that is halal for them. Ma yustahallu fi hadha shahr. And I started to cry and cry and cry. And then he came down from the pulpit. Oh, our prophet, Ya Rasulullah. When you're watching, when you were watching the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib, sitting down and listening to your speech, when you used to watch his head, you used to watch the future, that one of Almighty God's enemy will strike the commander of the faithful with his sword from behind and will martyr the commander of the faithful. And you started to cry. What about 30,000 people striking your grandson, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, in the day of Ashura? As Imam al Hussein al Mushtaba says, Allahu Akbar, Kullun yaru muttaqarrub ilallah bidamik. If those who killed Ali ibn Abi Talib believe that it is halal for them to kill him. Those who killed Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, had that been deep in their hearts that they will seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by killing Al Imam al Hussein. So this month is the month of Quran. The silent on Ali ibn Abi of the future month of Imam al Mahdi because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. Whatever He wants to do, His decrees upon all creations descend that upon our Imam al Imam al Mahdi. And it is the month of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, and that's why it is recommended to visit the grave of Imam al Hussein on first night of Ramadan, and it is commanded to visit Imam al Hussein on the 19th, on the 21th, on the 23rd, on the 27th, and in Eid al Fatr, it is recommended the night of Eid al Fatr, on the day of Eid al Fatr, to visit the grave of Imam al Hussein. So the month of Ramadan is a combination between Quran, the commander of the faithful, Imam al Hussein, and our beloved Imam. Al Imam al Mahdi, we all ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam al Imam al Mahdi and to give us the tawfiq and favor us with the tawfiq to be one of his soldiers and one of those who get killed and martyred protecting him. Hada walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Muhammadin.